All right, welcome back. Uh, this is video five in the uh, Reynolds Transport Theorem and uh, Radial Hydraulic Jump Experiment uh, lecture. Um, we had just gotten through setting up um, the geometry for radial hydraulic jump uh, for both mass and linear momentum conservation solutions for the Reynolds Transport Theorem. Uh, and now I'm going to work through uh, in um, a little bit of detail how to, how to actually solve Reynolds Transport for both of those conservation equations and to extract um, a useful equation that relates all of the hydraulic jump, uh, radial hydraulic jump parameters to one another. So here's that uh, same image that we saw before with all the same variables. Uh, we're going to start <coughs> with conservation of mass. Um, and in this case, because the fluid is incompressible, um, my conservation of mass is just going to be a um, conservation of volume flow rate because the density doesn't change uh, into or out of the jump because I'm essentially dealing with liquid water. Um, and so for my um, control volume, I have essentially got the mass crossing into the control volume, um, which is equal to uh, 2 pi times the velocity crossing the control volume and the area uh, that's taken up by the fluid crossing the control volume. Uh, and that is going to be set equal to uh, 2 pi times the velocity times the uh, area leaving the control volume. So uh, that's at this spot here. Um, and so that's that's my, my mass conservation uh, or my volume flow rate conservation. And the volume flow rate, of course, is the same entering my control volume as it is leaving the control volume uh, because no liquid was, was added uh, anywhere uh, except for where it entered and where it left. Uh, so that's where I get that equation from. Um, conservation of momentum is, is slightly more complex. Um, so let me start here with this equation, but let me start with the right side of the equation. So I've got the momentum um, leaving the system here and the mom momentum entering the system here. So the momentum leaving the system is essentially just the mass leaving the system at this spot multiplied by the velocity, right? Because momentum is just mass times velocity. Uh, and the momentum entering the system here is just the mass entering the system multiplied by the velocity because again, mass times velocity is momentum entering here. So that's how I end up with uh, R2, H2, V2 squared um, and R1, H1, V1 squared. That's just the momentum uh, leaving and the momentum entering. Uh, then on the other side of the equation, I have the force that's imposed upon this control volume. So recall uh, that we have a hydrostatic pressure induced by the fluid on this surface of the control volume, and we have a hydrostatic pressure induced on this surface by the control volume. And so that's essentially just what these terms are. Um, it's just uh, the hydrostatic pressure um, integrated over the area um, of the, the control volume. Um, so that's where I get this term for this surface, and I get this term for this surface, and I put it all together, and I end up with um, conservation of momentum, um, an expression that relates all those variables to one another. Now, <coughs> you guys will be given um, a handout um, that gives you a more detailed step-by-step -step derivation of both mass conservation, momentum conservation, and then how to combine them together. But remember, um, as we said in the previous video, um, the fluid has to satisfy simultaneously both mass conservation and momentum conservation. Um, it, it, it just has to because those are the laws of physics that govern the fluid flow. And so any solution where you know the value, say for R2 from momentum conservation has to have the same value, uh, for example, for R2 in mass conservation because both of these equations are satisfied simultaneously. So we use that fact uh, and then a few other little tricks of um, geometry and surface flows and so forth to get to this expression here, um, which essentially just relates the key parameters to one another, the height leaving the system that is the height after the hydraulic jump being equal to, uh, squared being equal to the height entering the hydraulic jump multiplied by the velocity um, entering uh, into here before the hydraulic jump. So this is kind of the key 
um, constitutive equation that comes out of the manipulation and the derivation, <coughs> and then we plug this expression back into the conservation of mass and conservation of momentum, and we arrive at this expression, which is the one that we're really looking for, which is a relationship between R, which is the um, radial location of the hydraulic jump from the center column of fluid, that's capital R, um, and that's equal to four times the volume flow rate um, squared, uh, the volume flow rate entering here squared, and then divided by um, a bunch of geometric parameters, pi squared g, which is the acceleration due to gravity, uh, multiplied by h2 squared and d2, uh, where again h2 is the height of the fluid after the hydraulic jump, and d2 is the diameter here of the nozzle um, where the fluid comes out of uh, before it uh, strikes the target. So uh, so anyway, we now have this expression which has all the key parameters in it, which you guys can then measure um, using an experimental apparatus. So you guys are going to be able to measure the volume flow rate, the height of the fluid after the hydraulic jump, the diameter of the nozzle, and the radius or the diameter um, of the hydraulic jump, and you'll be able to check to see whether this equation corresponds to what you're going to measure experimentally, but we'll talk about that later. Um, before we, we jump into the experimental portion of the lecture, um, I did want to just give you um, a couple of kind of neat figures. So this one um, is actually a, an art project that I was working on um, at, at my former university uh, where students were actually pouring um, colored liquid water into these plates and they were taking pictures um, of that pouring process as the pouring was producing uh, these hydraulic jumps. So each one of these is a hydraulic jump that's essentially produced by just pouring colored liquid water out of a bottle onto uh, a flat plate. So um, I wanted to show you that picture just because I think it's, it's got some neat artistic intrinsic value. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you uh, was this image from uh, a university that I used to work at. This is a laboratory scale hydraulic jump experiment. Um, you can see here the fluid coming down from the nozzle and then it spreads out as supercritical fluid and then here is the hydraulic jump and after that the fluid is subcritical. These students are measuring the radius of the jump and the depth of the jump using some instruments. Um, and I wanted to just show you this picture to juxtapose uh, what we were doing in the brick and mortar laboratory against what you guys are going to be doing um, with your at home radial hydraulic jump experiments. You can see this is a, a pretty big apparatus. It was built uh, essentially in a, in a toddler uh, waiting pool um, and it had a pretty high volume flow rate in order to get a hydraulic jump that was several um, inches in diameter. Uh, okay, so um, that leads us to the last presentation objective, and I've just reached um, actually eight minutes for this video. So I'm going to pause here, and then we'll pick it up uh, after you guys take uh, another break. So we'll see you in just a moment.